All right. So I'm here with Andrea Farnham. So you're running for uh, Commission District 8? Yes. Um, so why are you running? I am running in, in part because it kind of feels irresponsible not to. Uh, I'm not... I kind of didn't want to run, but there's a certain point where after you've studied and read and um, experienced what the problems in Athens are and you have some idea what the solutions are, uh, it feels pretty selfish to keep them to yourself uh, and not in some ways seek a kind of position where you could implement uh, some of those solutions. Uh, so. I guess I'm a little bit of a like resistant <laughs> public candidate uh, for office uh, in that I don't sort of love the public eye in terms of like holding office, but it's like having the cure for cancer and keeping it in my house. Uh, uh, that would be kind of a little unethical, I think. Um, so I, I think I have some idea what the problems in Athens are, uh, and I think I have some idea of what those solutions need to be. So I figure I should probably do something about it. Okay. So how have you been involved in the Athens community or in the local government over the past few years? Sure. I've been a citizen, uh, so I've been a community member in Athens for a little while and just involved wherever I can, uh, part of the school, local school governance teams and involved in the sort of parent uh, teacher side of things in terms of having kids in the, in the school district and involved in my kids attend games at uh, elementary school, so I'm involved. Pretty involved there at the school. Um, I've been involved in my neighborhood, the neighborhood association, and my neighborhood has a pool, so I've been on the pool board there, as well as just as a citizen participating in things like the Athens uh, Citizens Government Academy and the, and the Police Academy and that kind of thing, just to learn about how our community works and what's going on. Then, just as well with a few uh, different organizations in town. Uh, co-founding Athens Area DSA chapter and been somewhat involved in some other organizations that do work around town, Athens for Everyone, and um, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, do you have any other experience that you feel that qualifies you to... Sure. To that I am a therapist. I mean, I spend all day listening to people's problems, identifying their problems, and solving their problems, and... Uh, there's a way in which that gives me a unique perspective in in understanding, connecting sort of political antecedents to the problems that people experience in their life, that everything from mental health relationship issues to inequality in our community stems from, uh, has political antecedents. Uh, that sort of our deficient politics produce uh, deficient ways of being in the world, and deficient um, politics produce massive inequality in terms of inequality economically and then just inequality in terms of how we treat people and how we think about them. So uh, I, in some ways, feel like therapy has prepared me the best for um, this kind of position. But there's also a way in which we underestimate the experience of thinking that um, reading the right things uh, and having the being influenced by the right ideas, how much that comes into play with um, with anything, learning how to be a parent, learning how to do, um, learning how to be a good friend, be a good spouse, be a good citizen. You don't necessarily get there just by being one, right? So just because I'm born and raised and live a long time in Athens doesn't mean I know how to be a good citizen. But having exposure to being taught what a good citizen is uh, is actually what gives me. Uh, Ex ex experience um, in sort of thinking through what a good government is. So do, do I put think... a lot of a value on the experience of like study and thought. Do you think our um, civics education in high school is um, not up to par? So? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's a massive <laughs> failure. I mean, it's, it's, yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. I would. I would love to have a very, like, good partnership with the school board and, like, radically, radically, like, change our curriculum to something much more robust, to, like, training the right kind of people. I mean, I'm a therapist. I spend all of my time making people better. So, okay. I think it's important. 
Um, so if you're elected, what would your top priorities be in your first term in office? Sure. I mean, it's, it's no secret that the two things I care about have, have, have to do with racial uh, issues and labor. So my top priorities in some ways are more relevant now because of the pandemic. They were relevant before, but they're like extra relevant now because uh, inequalities are only going to get worse in terms of there's lots of data that show that this pandemic disproportionately impacts people who are on the bottom anyways. So the people who've been on the bottom aren't just going to be like more calcified on the bottom if we don't take seriously what kinds of interventions we need to like get rid of the floor. Um, so it's going to be a very much a focus on jobs and labor and things like a worker center and things like how do we get, you know, workers to stay in their work conditions? How do we get people better wages? How do we secure, um, how do we keep Athens treasure in Athens? How do we keep, you know, how do we, you know, really heighten uh, scrutiny on the procurement process in terms of who gets contracts and where and how, and how do we put as much of that money as possible into Athenian pockets? So Athenian workers, Athenian businesses, um, if you have a company in Athens that you own, like you should be first in line to like so many things. Um, and so we should really like center keeping treasure, well, Athens treasure in Athens. Um, so I, one of my top priorities is, is, you know, focusing on the poverty rate that we have. Um, we have no, no idea what the unemployment rate is going to be <laughs> in a little while, but I'm, I'm fairly certain I'm on very good ground to say it's going to be atrocious and um, like staggering. And, and are we ready to like tackle that? Like, what are we going to do? How are we going to put people to work? Uh, I have some pretty good ideas of like what we could do, but it's going to take some like spine and some creativity. To how do we get people working and what do we do? Because all these businesses are going under. I mean, it's going to be bad. So, yeah. I think, I don't know. I don't know. Anyone can not center like workers. At the in the coming like few, I don't know, decade. <laughs> but yeah. Do you feel that this election is more about big issues like social justice and climate change? I guess I'm getting a feel for your answers, but um, <laughs> or, or maybe more about smaller issues, uh, sort of like basic government services and amenities, and just generally keeping your constituents, serving your constituents, and keeping them informed. Um, I to be honest, I think both. I mean, I'm an ideas person, so I like like big. I'm, I'm very theoretical. I like, I like to have like a guiding, like logic to that, like orients. Like, I just don't think anyone has integrity if they don't have some kind of like principled way that they're like going through the world. So you have to, as a, any kind of leader or person who makes decisions to like do it well, you have to have some kind of idea of, of, of um, what is informing your decisions. Uh, so I, take it very seriously to have like what is what is good governance what is uh you know an, an Athens that's whole like that matters in terms of how we're going to make decisions as a commission but that also means on a day-to-day -day level we have to be serving our constituents and pay attention to whether or not everyone has trash service and everyone's getting you know leave and let pick up and you know how are they paying rent and what are we doing to secure them housing and job and you know child care and and they're you know most people are not i live in this like ridiculous bubble where we talk about politics all the time people are not doing that they're worried about child care they're worried about paying their rent their job their awful boss or whatever so most athenians are just trying to like live their life they're not you know up here Debating politics. Yeah, um, <laughs> so, I, I've actually been kind of worried that yeah. this election is going to be like maybe really low turnout because of the virus. I think I'm people are worried, worried about other that. things. Their livelihood. They're they've lost their job. Like they're stressed about their kids. Like they. I mean, people are strapped. Strapped. They do, don't have time to care about you know mm. other things when they're in sort of this like survival mode. So there's a way in which we have to like. All right, how do we get people the things that they need? So that's. There's a way in which, to me, it's both. You have to have the big ideas because you have to have a guiding principle of philosophy, guiding logic, and you can't stay there. You have to connect the two. So, like, what does that mean in terms of the day-to-day -day of people's lives? I mean, I, I, I connect everything to, like, freedom. So, everything from how we're getting everyone trash pickup is connected to enabling freedom, right? Like, no one can live in a safe, clean, healthy community if their like trash isn't being picked up. So it's a way in which like the tangible, practical things connect 
to? How do we enable freedom in people's lives? How do you define freedom? I, I mean, can that be answered quickly? Or? Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think of it in terms of freedom as the ability to like make plans and actualize those plans. Okay, so it's not, it's, it's a really broad definition, but it means if I want to be a soccer player, uh, I can like make a plan to be a soccer player, but then I need the ability to like actualize that. There needs to be like a league and like teams and other people that want to play and a place where I can get equipment and then refs and like fields and like I need things to be able to enact that. And I need someone to watch my kids so that I can go play or whatever. Um, so I need like the conditions that enable that. Uh, and uh, it doesn't mean that I get to enact all of my plans because some of my, my plans might suck or some of my plans might be bad. Uh, but it means that, like, if there's things I want to do, freedom is being able to, like, externalize that. All right. Uh, so my next question is about taxes. Yeah, um, I'm sure. just asking everyone um, what their feelings are about taxes. Taxes. Hey, sorry. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, so do you, do you think our local government is adequately funded right now? And if not, how would you change that? And are there some taxes that you like or dislike more than others on the local level? Yes, sure. So, uh, I, um, taxes are about us as a community coming together and deciding the, the goods and services that we need. Uh, and everyone's sort of like pitching in to pay for those things, right? So if there's something that we want, we have to pay for it. And how do we pay for it? Like we want a library. How's that going to get, how's that going to happen? Um, so the idea that like I'm fine paying taxes as long as the like goods and services that are given to us as a community are actually like helping the community. What pisses me off is when I'm paying taxes and it's not resulting in, in something like for the good of the whole. Right. So for example, I am not a fan of the progressive, uh, types of taxes like the swaths and those kinds of things in part because I'm not convinced that it results in something that's good for the whole community. It tends to be sort of this like money grab for like people who already have money, uh, in a way that I am not convinced is actually like good for the whole community. I could be talked into it being like a good thing if, if I saw more like if I saw a better use of the funds, right? So if you're going to tax me for a SPLAS, I want it to make a worker center. Uh, if you're going to tax me for, you know, East lost uh, things for our schools, obviously our schools need buildings, but I also want janitors and bus drivers and food staff workers paid more. I want pre-K teachers to like have adequate wages. So there's things that obviously those monies, by the way, those money just go to capital projects, so it means buildings. But if we're going to spend all these millions on buildings, we need to do something about the wages of the people working in the buildings. So um, I want a little more. I want the taxes to translate into things that are more universally good, as opposed to like taxes that translate into good for special interests. Uh, so that, that part kind of frustrates me. Are we adequately funded? No. Um, I do not think we're adequately funded as a, as a government. Um, but I also think we could be, and, um, I also think that we could be way more creative with the money that we do have. I think we spend it very poorly. Uh, I think there's ways in which we spend it the way that we need to spend it because we all need water and trash pickup and things like that. But there's departments that are under, underfunded. Very much so. And then there's um, departments that are overfunded. So there's some definite things I would fix about the budget uh, in terms of how we allocate money, how much goes where. Uh, so there's, to me, enough wiggle room for creativity and what we already have. But I'm also not scared to bond out or borrow money for better better and things that are good for the community. Um, so did I hear that you would be more likely to support property taxes over sales taxes? Or is there a third option? Yeah, there, I mean, I would be I would be open to some creative ways to tax. So, for example, I'm interested in the commuter tax. Uh, I'm interested in the fact that we have a lot of people that live outside of our county. Uh, and uh, that's fine. They get to live wherever they want. People get to live wherever they want. But if you're living outside the county, coming into the county, working, taking our money and spending it, most of it outside of the county on your own property taxes and blah, 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 blah. That's fine, but uh, 
why can't we have some kind of commuter tax to incentivize people to live here? There's a few issues with that. We're land mass wise. We're uh, confined in terms of how like, you know, it's 122 square miles. So like it's, uh, but I prefer, I get, you want Athens money going to Athenians. Uh, and it's, obviously fine for people to not live here and to like commute in, but we're the number one employer to a few surrounding counties. And that's a problem for me uh, in terms of like them taking a lot of our wealth and, and it, it's siphoning outside of the county. And I would like to, some of that to be returned just as a matter of like, right. Like you use our roads and services and goods. And I think you should pay a little bit for it um, and not just take it all outside of our county. So, so yeah, I mean, things like that. We could, we could be a little creative with a few things. Um, there's a few creative things we could also do for uh, taxing UGA um, and not taxing, but you know, there's a phone service tax, right? That we could actually um, institute uh, in terms of uh, taxing uh, phone use. So, cell phone. I was doing some research on this. I would have to, I would have to do a little more, but I think there's a, some wiggle room open for interpretation of how we could, um, get a tiny percentage of uh, money from, you know, folks that come and use a lot of our stuff and don't pay much for it. Yeah. And why should voters choose you over your opponents? I think that one thing that's interesting to me about this pandemic is uh, if your ideas were irrelevant before the pandemic, they're super relevant now that the pandemic has hit. Uh, versus if your ideas were relevant before, then it's like heightened in terms of like, it being relevant because a crisis kind of un uncovers the underbelly of the things that were wrong. So it's not like the problems we had before stopped being problems because of, because of the crisis. It's the opposite. The problems we had before are actually exacerbated by the crisis. So I think people should pick me because my ideas were relevant before and they're more relevant now. Uh, I've always understood that the primary issues in Athens are related to race uh, and labor. I, I've always had my finger on the pulse of like, what is actually going on here? What the problems are? I mean, I spend all day, every day, helping people identify problems. Uh, it sounds a little arrogant, but there's a way in which like, I know how to identify problems. I know how to look at things and see like what's happening underneath and what the real like issue is. That doesn't mean I know what the solution right away is, but you can't get to step B if you can't get to step A. Uh, and so I think that, um, I think that I, I think that my ideas speak for themselves in terms of why it was a solution before and why it's the solution now, even more so. Uh, I thought we needed a worker center before. We absolutely need a worker center now. Do you have any idea what the unemployment is going to be because of this thing? You know, I, economics and keeping Athens treasure in Athens was relevant before. It's super relevant now because we have no idea what the tax situation is going to be. So all this blah stuff, that's not going to be what, it, what we thought it was going to be. What we thought we were going to be able to bring in, like we're looking at some like really interesting problems um, that we're going to have to address because the, the tax revenue is not going to be what we thought. Um, so we have some challenges that are... Um, front of us and uh, I I think that I knew how to solve them before and I know how to solve them now. Okay. Uh, yeah. um, and is there anything else that you'd like to mention that we didn't get a chance to cover? <sighs> I mean, you know, we're trying to figure out what good governance is and what kinds of commissioners, what commissioners need to do to um, make Athens a, a great place to live that's prosperous where people can work and live and do the things that they want to do make plans actualize those plans but i am also a therapist and you can't disconnect sort of the like cultural production of people from the government uh figuring out how to enable freedom for those people Okay. That like we have to make better people and we have to make a better government. Uh, and you can't do one of those things without the other. 
uh, and that we have to create cultural infrastructure that makes better people. That, that again, like what you asked about civics education and things like that, we have to teach people how to be like good, thoughtful, wise people. Like that is essential to any like functioning democracy. And we have to make a better government that actually enables people's freedom. And so I do both of those things, and I'm interested in how we as Athenians can do both of those things, even as I'm, you know, leaning over here to the side of, all right, how do we fix our government and actually do, like, what we're supposed to as a commission. Um, And I think um, it's essential to understand how those two things are connected and why we have to tackle both at the same time. All right, well, thanks for doing this with me. Yeah, thanks. (laughs)